Hello there folks, welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I'm your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now today I'm going to answer a question from a viewer which has got a philosophical leaning towards it and I'm going to try and offer some advice to a young fellow who's reached out just to get my views on things and I'm going to tell you what young Dustin has asked for me. He tells me that he is a college student who is about to graduate in May of this coming year. He has a firm and independent sartorial identity but asks me for advice what I would give to a young lad like him who is about to be 22 years of age and is struggling on knowing what he wants to do in life. He wants to be a priest at some point in the future, but he knows this requires some years of going through the ranks of the hierarchy of his, his own church, and it's always recommended by the clergy within his church uh, that those working within it have some form of secular job and secular experience. So what advice do I have for Dustin in relation to that? Well, the first thing I would say is that, Dustin, um, the decision you have made to embark upon the path of becoming a priest in life is an interesting one. It's a noble and profound decision that not many people of the young age of 21, as you presently are in this modern era, may have the nous and the foresight to look towards as a future career path. And I think, as you say, uh, you're absolutely right, and I think you're very valid in saying so, that people who seek a profession within the clergy as a priest uh, would be well advised to gain some life experience and some life knowledge, maybe before they embark, on that, embark upon that path, because that's something they can draw upon in the future as well. So today I'm going to offer you some suggestions that I think a 22 year old chap like yourself totally you know forgetting that you want to be a priest this is advice I would give to anybody of your age seeking to have a meaningful path in the future and a career which is going to be valuable and useful to you and the community around you. Now Dustin the first piece of advice I have for you is really to cultivate as many relationships with people from diverse backgrounds as you pass possibly can at this phase of your life because you know I, I don't know much about being a priest I have to say I personally follow a secular lifestyle and have done through most of my adult life but I can only imagine that being a priest is essentially it's a leadership role and it's a leadership role which involves not only leading the spiritual needs of the adherence of your own particular belief structure but it's also about being an emotional leader it's about being that you know that moral compass to the people who look up to you for support in that path it is about being a practical leader as well at times of woe and of stress uh, you know people often look to their religious leadership to help steer them through difficult periods in their life be it personal or on a societal level so actually as far as being ready for taking on a position like that, the best piece of advice I can give is to make as many good friendships and relationships from people of, of all different backgrounds that you possibly can. Because from, from those relationships you will certainly understand perhaps more of what people's thoughts are, their thinking processes, and you will be able to take on more empathy than you would do if you didn't have knowledge of all these various um, different beliefs and thought processes that people will have outside of the world which you are likely to inhabit in your chosen career path and very much being empathetic understanding people uh, is going to be part of your job and you know the more people you encounter and build relationships with you know, the more you're going to be prepared and have a greater perspective of the task that lies ahead from you, for you, whether or not that actually entails, as you say, going into the clergy or going into any number of career paths in the future. 
Now, my second tip for you in this period of your life, which is very formative, you know, in your early 20s, you're not fully formed, you're not fully mature. So there's lots of opportunity to, to learn and take on more information, which will certainly flavor the future version of you. Uh, so at this point, what I'm going to suggest to you is really to travel and explore different cultures, different parts of the world as much as possible. Now, for my own life journey, although it's been totally different from the path that you seek to take, one of the best returns on investment of my time and of my money has been travel. Because the more you travel, the more you are exposed to different cultures, different beliefs, different views on the world. Because the world is a very diverse place. And if you've been born and brought up in an area, you know, you, you most likely, if you're following uh, a religious path, you're likely following what your parents have laid out before you. You maybe have yet to explore your own decision making. And perhaps a bit of travel, exposure to other people, exposure to other cultures will help to underline that you are making the right decision for you, or it might open up new avenues for you which you hadn't previously thought about. And this goes for you know any young person, let alone somebody who's thinking about you know a very specific career path such as you, Dustin. There are of course people who will have undecided mindsets at this stage. They don't know what they want to do. But travel often helps lift the mist from one's mindset and allows you to focus on the future. And let's be honest, you know, broadening your world view is something which can only be a positive investment within yourself. Understanding more about the world in which you live and your place in it helps you to really find your feet and project yourself forward in life because then you're happy, you're solid, and your foundation is set for you. Now, for myself, you know, I traveled extensively as possible when I was in the younger phases of my life, and I still do, because I know for every time I visit a new country, I learn something new. I meet new people. And it is definitely, you know, one of the best things I ever did for my own personal development was travel as widely and meet as many people as possible. Now, my third tip for you in thinking about your future path is volunteer and engage in community service in the area in which you're studying or in which you live or find yourself, you know, very active. Because regardless of what your future career may choose, when you get involved in volunteering, you're going to have a lot more understanding of potential jobs which may be interesting for you. Particularly, and as you say, you, you're interested in uh, working in the clergy, which is in essence a service profession. You're providing a service for people who need your help. Volunteering is all about giving service. And if you can you know, unleash yourself into the world of service provision, uh, selflessly providing service for others, it will certainly help you understand more about empathy, about you know, your appreciation for uh, the situation that other people find themselves, and what your part can be in making that better for people. And when you actively do that, and you get that sense of you know, supporting people, helping people through a difficult time, if that's something that you find you know, deeply enjoyable uh, for yourself, you know you're on the right path. You might even choose to follow a path which leads you even more down that route of helping people in a time of need. I can use my own self as an example here. When I was kind of in my mid-30s, um, I started getting involved in volunteering quite heavily. Uh, ultimately, it led to me you know, starting a non-profit organisation myself to deal with specific issues within the community in which I lived and then nationally and internationally. And it became a very big part of my life, which run, ran parallel with my professional day job. Until eventually I reached a point, as I, as I am now, where um, the majority of my time, when I'm not here in front of a camera, is involved in working in the charity sector, the voluntary sector, in providing that service provision, which I did once as a volunteer. So volunteering for me, opened a door and showed me a path which I would never have experienced otherwise. It showed me that that certain thing which I do today uh, as a job was possible and I started that journey as a volunteer and transitioned into a professional path in that route. Because I know for me, 
that's really something I love and I'm passionate about. So volunteering and community service, you can't invest your time in a better way at this phase of your life. Now, my fourth tip for you is something quite practical and it involves a little bit of courage because you've got to reach out to somebody and ask for it. And that is seek out mentor situations. So when you're a young guy and you've got ideas about things you, you know, jobs you'd like to have, places you'd like to be, you will probably have somebody who is a role model for you. You look at this person or persons and you think to yourself, that is where I would like to be in 10 years in 20 years or maybe at the conclusion of a career and if you've got that person who you can look at and it helps you vision your own future that's a great opportunity because if it's a, a tangible per person you can reach out to in your world go and speak to them contact them in some way send an email write a letter make initial contact and tell them you know you are somebody who's in a position that i would like to get to at some point would it be possible for you to give me some advice on my life journey? Now, I've done a whole video on mentorship and the value of it in anybody's life journey. But from a young chap like yourself, if you can pick out somebody, maybe look 10 years ahead and imagine yourself in 10 years. And if you can see somebody in your world who looks like where you would want to be, make the effort, reach out to them, ask them, you know, is there any chance you could maybe become my mentor and show me a path to get to where you are today. How did you do it? Because you'll find most people are very agreeable to sharing information like this because it strokes their ego, really, if they, if they think they're successful and they can share that with somebody else. But for you, it will help you along the path because the mentor-mentee relationship is really about offering shortcuts to people so that they can get to a successful point quicker than if they have to go along and make their own mistakes because basically as a mentor you've made the mistakes as their proxy and it's really beneficial. Now my fifth tip for you and final tip is one which kind of links in with many of the other things which I've talked about. I can see how they intertwine and that is I would advise that you do all that you can to develop some emotional resilience because if you're going to enter into a life in which you're providing service to other people and I I resonated this because you know for 23 years I was a police officer and that's really about providing service to others but certainly in in a profession where service provision is going to be the main part of your job you're going to be able or you're going to need to be able to be resilient because for sure life is a series of peaks and troughs and it is how you deal with those troughs which will decide the height of the peaks which you will scale in the future. Now, the best way you can develop that emotional resilience, and by that I really mean being prepared to deal with those troughs and build yourself back up to a peak when life throws you a curveball, it takes the rug from under your feet, you've got to pick yourself up and start climbing again. Emotional resilience is your key. So put yourself in positions where you're going to face challenges. You're gonna get knocked back a few times. It can feel brutally uncomfortable to fail. Yet it is in failure where we build the greatest knowledge about ourselves and we build the resilience which will take us forward to success in the future. Now I've talked about some things already which will help you on that path. Things like volunteering. If you volunteer in the, vo in the charity sector, you are going to face failures, difficulties, challenges on a daily basis. You're gonna be facing people who are at a very difficult phase in their life. You're gonna try and help them. It's not gonna be successful all that often sometimes. You will learn empathy in so doing, but also you're gonna to learn to overcome problems and disappointment and failure. And that building of that emotional resilience reservoir in your personal psychology is something which will absolutely set you up better in the future. The young person who goes through life, passes all their exams and has a gilded path through life is a person who's going to take the biggest fall when they come to that first trough. They're not going to know how to pick themselves back up. They're not going to know that they're in a trough and that all they have to do is slowly but surely scale the next peak to be back on the plateau of life again. If you've had a few knocks and bumps on your first journey through life, you're gonna be ready and prepared when that 
trough comes and you're going to know what to do mentally, emotionally and physically to overcome it. Well, I hope that was of some use to you. Those five tips that I've just offered can be very valuable for you and they could steer you in a path which could be useful. Because this period now, before you embark upon a potentially life-changing career path, this is a time where you can invest in yourself and all of that investment is going to put you in far better stead for the life challenges that you face ahead. So invest in volunteering, in a bit of travel, in building relationships with people and building your emotional resilience because this is all going to work out well for you. Whether you become a priest or whether you follow a corporate path in the future, it doesn't matter. All of this investment in you is investment in your future and that way, you know, you can't go wrong. You're, you're investing in something which is totally positive. Now, if you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to support the channel, you can, you know, click the subscribe button. You can leave me a comment. You can drop me an email. You could buy me a coffee or even become a patron. And I make additional video content for my patrons each and every week. So until the next time, Dustin, good luck to you. And I hope you all have a great time and I will see you again very soon.